Hi everybody, I'm just going to do a little video tutorial for you guys on uh, how to use satellite data, how to grab satellite data, how to organize it and create a really great displacement. Um, so we're going to basically start with Google Earth. Um, and what happens with Google Earth is that we can download a plugin basically to help us find uh, sections of the US which has the highest resolution satellite data. And we're going to basically um, grab a plugin and install that plugin, uh, which shows us um, the US chopped up into what are called quads or these sort of rectangular maps. And we have to go through a couple of long steps, unfortunately, to convert the raw data to something usable like a TIFF image for displacement. So I'm going to go show you in Google where to find this. There's a link here where you can download this uh, plugin. You just have to, have to search for uh, USGS quad map KML or KMZ. Uh, KMLs and KMZs are basically um, Google map plugins. Um, so you can search for this specific term here or you can basically go to USGS quad map KML. It should be this link which is at geology.sdsu. Uh, it's one of the better ones I've found that's available. Um, so I'm going to go to Google Earth. I've, I've already installed it. To install it, you simply have to open the file, the KML or KMZ file, or double click it. And inside of Google Earth, um, you've typically got a bunch of things turned on, like places and photos and things like that. Um, you can turn photos on if you want to sort of check out some locations and see if there's something you like. I found an area sort of over here that I really enjoyed. Um, really nice mountain terrain, really cool views, and I'm going to go in, and if you want to, you can actually click on fly to the photos location, and it'll take you pretty much right there to the spot in Google where the photo was taken, and that's all thanks to GPS uh, tagging. So I'm going to just close that and uh, rotate my way around so we can sort of see the, the location. So we've got some really amazing uh, peaks and terrains. And um, what I want to do is basically grab this data. Now, one of the problems is, is that um, I need to find the, I need to find the, um, the county data. So uh, a lot of times there's tons and tons of information on here that's hard to find because of the extra labels. So I'm going to turn off photos turn off places and leave borders and labels active. Everything else is basically turned off. Uh, I've already kind of scattered this out and I found uh, this county over here is Inyo. Uh, with Google Maps, you sometimes have to zoom into the right distance at the right location to see the county name. It'll show up in green. So that's Inyo. Over here is uh, Fresno, I believe. If I zoom in enough, Fresno, Madeira. Uh, this is Mono. And so the area that I really like is actually across three different counties, which uh, makes it a little bit difficult to find. Um, but I'm going to uh, just check this out for a sec. And uh, I'm going to basically enable the plugin that I have. So if I turn on the... Um, USGS quad maps. I don't want to turn on for every single thing. So I'm going to just un uncheck the plugin and turn on California. And what this does is it gives me all the names of the counties very, very easily. Uh, there's actually two types of names in here. One's like an encoded name. So I'm going to turn off the encoded name or the MRC label. And I'm going to basically examine, uh, I can turn off all labels just to help me out for a second. And I'm going to try and focus on a five by five grid that I want to grab. So I want these two mountain ranges. So I'm going to grab, um, starting with a row of five across here, since these quads lie on the border of two, two, um, sorry, two counties, uh, I'm going to assume that the ones that are more in one county will belong to that county. So this is Inyo. And I've got a little Word document where I've laid out Mono County, Inyo, and Fresno. So this is actually really, really nice. If I actually click on this, I can actually see uh, 
uh, the name of, of each quad. There's Fish Slow, there's Ro Rovana, Mount Morgan, all these different things. So I'm going to start with uh, Mount, uh, Mount Barcroft and basically go across. So I'll go uh, starting with this one, one, two, three, four, five. And that should give me just enough mountains in the other side as well. Um, so I'll do a five by five. I might even do actually a six by six grid. So it's going to take a bit of time. Uh, I'm going to pause this and I'll come back to you in a minute. All right, welcome back. Um, so what I've basically done is I've gone through and clicked on each of the labels here that I, I wanted in my six by six grid. And uh, I found another little thing actually that made this a lot easier. I turned off both the feature label and the MRC label. I've disabled them both, but by clicking on each quad, I can get the names of those things. Um, so I made sure to really note the county which county they were in and the name of these different um, quads. So I've got Mono County, Inyo County, and Fresno, and I found each of the labels of those quads. So when I go back to uh, this website, it's called geocom.com. Um, you can basically go here, you have to create a free login, <clears throat> and you can go to California. So I'm looking in California, I'm looking in those three counties of Mono, Inyo, and Fresno. So I clicked on California, went to count, countywide data, and I basically opened up my different counties, Inyo, Mono, and Fresno. There it is. So for each county, you, you have to do the same thing in each county. We want 24K DEM models, the digital elevation model. It's one of the highest resolution formats of satellite scans and we have two download options there's a normal download and premium uh, the normal ones you basically get for free so uh, in this case we're looking at Inyo so I have to go through the list and find Blanco Mountains and you'll scroll through and see Blanco Mountains click on the green download button um, I've saved you the trouble of having to watch me do that dozens of times and these are the quads here so um, I've got uh, probably a couple of extra actually. I wanted 36 because I did a 6x6 six six quad grid. So 6x6 six six is 36. I've got 38 so I might, might have grabbed a couple of extras by accident. And the process here is uh, again it gets a little tricky at times but we're going to select everything in here. Right click and if you have uh, WinZip or 7-Zip you should be able to go to 7-Zip go extract to and this extracts each object to its own folder or you can actually say extract here that that actually won't hurt anything if we extract here so you're gonna see you get another version we went from a .gz to a .tar file and I'm actually with the selection still active I'm gonna right click and delete those extra files and these these are basically I it's like having a zip file and a zip file so inside is actually where we want all this really good rich data so I'm going to select all of these again, and this time instead of doing 7-zip extract here, I'm going to say extract to each folder. So each, each um, zip file will have a folder of its own name. So that's done. Now I can right-click and delete these uh, files. So I basically got my um, raw satellite scan folders. Tons of files in there, but you don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is basically grab uh, this program that I'm using, which is called um, Pull SDTS. I've given you guys in applications, There's uh, you have to run Python, which is a little uh, programming language, basically, and Pull SDTS is an application. Uh, again, there's a bunch of dot, dot .py, .pyc files. Those are Python scripts, but if I double-click on Pull SDTS, it basically launches this little program. So I've got all my counties, I've already downloaded all that. Um, next, what I need to do is basically analyze. Again, this is painstaking, so I'll skip ahead to avoid torturing you guys with this. But what you wanna do is start looking at the dem files. So I'm gonna just copy and paste my folder location here. Go in, and it's it's really gonna identify the key file that you need. So I'm gonna open up that, that file for each folder. And basically what the satellite data includes is the actual raw elevation of these mountains so uh, these mountains are in they show them in feet and also in 
meters. And what we need to do is actually find what the lowest point in each image, uh, in the total set of images is and what the highest point is because what's gonna happen is we're gonna export a black and white grayscale image and it needs to equalize or basically distribute the, the whole grayscale from the lowest point to the highest point. If we don't set that properly, we'll get vast areas of white or vast areas of black, which will give us completely, completely flat uh, portions within our um, displacement. And we don't want that, unless you want plateaus, but we ideally don't want that. So in my little Word doc, I'm just gonna go uh, write out high, high point and low point. I do this in feet because um, Photoshop actually defaults to feet, or s at least in some of the steps of the process, we default to feet. So I'm going to just start by showing you the first two to three that I'm going to analyze. So the low point is 6,765 feet. So 6,765. The high point is 13,136. And then I'll go click on select file, go through the folder, select the next one. So our new low point is 5870 feet, 5870. The high point won't change because uh, 13,000 feet obviously is higher than 11,000. So I'll go through. New low point is 1533. Okay, and I'm going to pause the video and uh, we'll be back with the complete high and low and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I'm back. Um, what I've done is I've gone through all of these files and <clears throat> I found the high and the low point of the total series of the whole set of images. So the lowest point is 225 feet, the high point is 14,267. And so I'm going to go back and start at the beginning of the image set and export these basically now as raw files. So I'm going to load the DEM and you'll see this beautiful grayscale image. I'm going to save this as a raw file. And I'm going to leave it in feet, leave it on PC. And this is what I was talking about earlier, equalize to self or equalize to range. If I actually say equalize to range, what that does is each image will take its its actual height and fit it into the proper part of the grayscale. So when I stitch them all together, um, they'll form a complete seamless image instead of being having their own complete grayscale that matches their low point and high point. So I'm gonna only have to set this up once, but I'm gonna put in 2251 for the low and 14267. Now, if you wanna be a little cautious, you can maybe add like uh, three, four, five to the end of this. So instead of 67, I can go to uh, 72. Just to ensure there's like a little buffer there. And this one I would drop lower by five or six. So I could just make that an even two, two, four, five. And you, we want 16 bit because this needs to be 16 bit grayscale. So it has fine, fine steps, fine tuned steps in the uh, resolution. So we get uh, a nice kind of crisp image. So I'm going to hit save, and this uh, I'll save out to uh, my downloads folder where California is, and I'll save that. And you see, actually, it gives you the name, and it also gives you the actual resolution of these. This will come in handy a bit later, so I'm going to save that out. And then I'm just going to close the viewer, go to select file, and do the next one. Uh, one thing I want to mention, actually, is in this particular image set, the feet were here and the meters were on the right but sometimes it flipped. So when you're checking your range, just try to keep an eye on that. I know it's a bit boring and mind numbing, but you really wanna make sure you get that range done correctly. Otherwise, it'll kind of throw off the whole set. So just make note of that, save this raw file. Again, the range is, is recalled from the last time, so we pretty much just have to do this sort of manually. So I'll show you one more, and then uh, I'll move on. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes the feet and meters are switched, so don't just automatically look to the one side. Try to just double check it each time. So again, meters now is showing up on the left instead of the right and, and it's inverted with the inches. Uh, I've already checked that. I had to double check because I thought something was a little strange when I was looking at the numbers. Anyways, I'm going to finish this process. I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back. Hey everybody, I'm back. Um, so what I'm going to do next is basically open up these raw files that have been saved out from 
pull SDTS. So what it does is it actually gives you the, the names of all the quads like we had originally found in um, Google Earth using the quad map plugin and then locating those on geocom.com. Uh, the problem with these raw files though is that they don't just open normally inside of Photoshop. So when you uh, click to open one, I actually just opened up my whole set. Didn't take too long, but it's it's very specific. Again, a lot of the steps in this process require that you pay extreme amounts of, of attention to what you're doing and that you be very, very precise. So I'm going to just close Ren Peak. Um, so I'm not going to save that. I'm going to just show you the process. So this is the same for each and each and every image you want to just um, open these in Photoshop so you can go to file or open file and open or what I'm going to do is actually right click go to properties and I changed my opens with setting to open with Photoshop uh, if it's not listed in here or in other programs then you can go to browse go to uh, wherever your programs are located go to Adobe uh, Photoshop CC is what I'm using right now, the latest edition. Say open, it's going to show up there. I'll say OK, and then OK again, and it'll just default to that. So when I open this up now, uh, double click that, it's going to ask me for the dimensions of the image. Now, um, because I've already entered these in, it knows these, but chances are these numbers in here might sh might show up as something else like, like this, and these numbers could be way off. So what you want to do is always read the image and it shows you width by height. So it's 1141 by 1408. So 1141 by 1408. Make sure it's set to 16 bit, uh, 16 bit which is the depth uh, that we're working at in PC, which is what our, our default was when we were working in pull SDTS. I'm going to hit open and it looks great. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you don't get this information right. So we'll kind of pretend this image didn't open properly. I'll set it to one of the numbers that it was probably like. Um, and I'll say OK. And we're going to get something strange probably. If it'll open. <laughs> or I'll hit guess or swap or something like that. Anyways, if it does open and it's off, um, you'll get something like this. It comes out all garbled because it doesn't know how to interpret the file properly. Um, the problem is that, you know, we're basically using uh, raw data direct from a satellite. It's not in, an, in any kind of common image format that we know or Photoshop knows. It's designed specifically for some of this um, sort of research software that's used in um, all sorts of different industries. So I'm going to just punch the correct numbers in 1141 I believe it was 1141 by 1408 and again 16 bit PC say okay and it opens perfectly so for 1141 1408 so each one of these quads I've opened up already inside Photoshop um, and I'm going to show you guys actually a really quick way to assemble all of these tabs into one file um, Looks like I actually just accidentally closed my WestGuard pass. I'm going to just double click that to re-import it. Oh, well, maybe not. No, it's there. Good. All right. So I'm going to go to File, uh, Scripts, and then I'm going to say um, Load Files into Stack. So what that will do is it basically uh, can load uh, selected images in a folder uh, or an entire folder or all your open images. and it compiles them all into one PSD file. So it's going to say use files. You can say folder if you wanted to, like I said, select a source folder. In this case, I'm going to say use files, add open files. So it should add everything that's open in Photoshop right now. And we see all the different raw files. Uh, I don't want it to necessarily align the sources. I don't want to create a source, uh, a smart object. So I'm going to just leave those unchecked and say, okay. So you see it going through adding each one to a new layer in this new PSD document. Now, since I did a six by six grid, this thing is gonna be relatively massive. Uh, for displacements to work in general, uh, displacements need to be roughly uh, minimum 4,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels. So I went with a six by six grid because each of these images, as you can see, is at least 1,100 pixels wide and 1,400 pixels tall. So I'm gonna get probably something in the neighborhood of a, of a six, six by eight, 6,000 by 8,000 or 6,000 by 9,000 pixel uh, image at the end. And I'm, I'm basically just going to have to uh, collect all these different images and try and match them 
like puzzle pieces. Uh, there's a couple of extra steps that I need to show you guys to make sure um, that this works okay. Um, you can see the black trim. I have to get rid of that, and there's a very, very specific way in which I do that. So I'm just going to let this thing compile, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm back, and we can see everything's been uh, relatively neatly compiled into this uh, PSD document. So I've got all these layers, and um, what I want to do next is essentially expand the canvas out. So I'm going to try to make this thing, I generally try to make it a bit larger than what I need. So right now this is, um, if I go to image, canvas size, again you've got the shortcut, alt, control, C. Um, I'm going to basically go and click on canvas size. And I'm going to switch to uh, pixels. Um, again, I'm going to probably set this to uh, 12,000 pixels. And I'll set this maybe by 10,000 pixels wide. And I'll say OK. And what it's going to do is just give us this massive, massive workspace. So what I can do next is start clicking and dragging out. Um, I think I've got some sort of snap turned on. So I'm going to turn off snap. Again, a shortcut for that is shift control semicolon. So you can turn that off and on with the shortcut or just use the menu. And uh, let's see. Now there's an easy tip I'm going to mention for you guys. If you want to quickly select a layer or the pixels that belong to a layer that you want to grab, you just simply have to use the move tool. Uh, the shortcut for that is V by the way to switch. So B for brush, V for move. Well, V for Victor, really, but uh, it is the move tool. And I'm going to hold control, and that allows me to basically activate the that layer and move it so I can quickly start to space these out. Now, there are uh, some people have asked me, you know, are there programs that, that just take out all of this slow, painful work? And there are actually programs. Uh, the problem is that they all cost a fair bit of money. Um, one of the ones out there is called Global Mapper. Uh, you can try it out, but it um, has tons and tons of features, which is great, but it can be very difficult to learn. And um, unfortunately, you know, we, we just don't have the budget to buy uh, software for one project out of, out of you know, your three-year program. So we have to do this kind of longer method. So I'm going to show you uh, just a couple of steps, and then I'll skip again to the end where I have uh, everything kind of uh, compiled uh, and arranged neatly. So I'll just try to match up a few pieces here. Um, yeah, this is a bit overwhelming, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'm going to use my control method here and see if I can get uh, a kind of a match. Okay. So I might actually start to arrange some of the darker pieces and put them in one spot, and the lighter pieces in another spot. Um, so uh, I'm just going to pause this and I'll be back in a sec with a few pieces that I've found that... Okay, so we're back. I've got uh, basically three little images here that I've found that are definitely uh, matches for each other. Um, so I'm going to just show you an example of how to stitch these together. And the process will be the same for the rest of this uh, image. And then I'll come back and show you the finished, finished product. So um, I've moved everything around. I'm going to zoom in really close here. And we can definitely see these things are, are pretty dead on match. So what I'd like to do basically is go in and use a magic wand. I'm going to select the borders. I'll just isolate the very, very top one here. And um, you see these borders are a problem. They won't allow proper stitching. Um, if I hit W, which is for the wand tool, it gives me the quick select tool. But I actually want the magic wand. And I'm going to set the tolerance to 0 or 1. Uh, usually I use 1, and I'm going to turn off anti-aliasing. I'll show you why in a second. So if I click on this... You see it grabs all those very, very dark pixels, um, but sometimes the anti-aliasing will try to smooth out the selection. Uh, it actually looks pretty good right now, but I found, uh, yeah, actually this is a case right here. So if I zoom in close enough, I'm actually going to lose a couple little rows of pixels here because it's trying to smooth out by anti-aliasing. So if I disable that, turn it on, you see I get just a precise, precise selection of those pixels. 
So for this layer, I'm going to continue to grab additional parts of the selection by holding shift and I'm going to move over, hold shift, grab the rest of the selection. Always a good idea to double check this, but um, I'm pretty confident that this will work very, very well. So I'll uh, zoom out a bit and I'm going to basically hit layer mask and you see the mask is basically inverted it's it should be going the other way so I'm going to just select that layer hit control I to invert the mask and we get a nice clean uh, snapshot of that image so I'll do the next uh, image in the set again just uh, holding shift and clicking with the magic wand click on mask hit control I to invert oops do the same thing with the final layer so shift click uh, and you can see here there's a little problem it's bleeding the selection so I'm going to zoom in a bit um, this is where the pixels are very close to if not near black I can try tolerance of zero and see if that does it so I'm going to undo in my document and uh, let me zoom out a bit so I can see what's going on here or I'll deselect try tolerance of zero uh, it's a little better um, this shouldn't affect the the ability to grab the exact pixels on the edges. If I need to, I can hit Q, which is quick mask. This is this little button over here on the left. <clears throat> and it basically just puts a, a red overlay on everything. And if I use a uh, black brush, I can um, basically isolate that to uh, the exact, exact specification. So I'm just holding shift and clicking back and forth a little bit. And once I hit Q and get out of that, you see I've maintained that selection there. So uh, again, you do have to be a little bit careful when working on this thing to not um, grab or isolate pixels that you don't want. But because we're using layer mask, that's actually easy enough to fix. So you can either paint it out in quick mask or you can um, do it afterwards by painting directly in that layer mask. So the next step, very, very easy. Uh, just control click the layer you want. And I like to zoom in a little bit closer for this. These quads are actually so precise, they match up perfectly. So I like to move them as close as I can. And I use my arrow keys up, down, left, right on the keyboard. I like to leave a little pixel gap. And then once that gap is closed, it'll be completely, completely seamless. So I'll control click on the other image, which now selects the layer. And I should double check at the bottom edge here, the bottom corner to make sure it's going to fit. And it looks fairly good. Um, the reason I like having that, that little one, two pixel gap is that I can know certainty that I'm not overlapping. Because if, even if I push this over just a little bit, it actually still blends fairly well. But you might have some little errors like this little line here. And we want to avoid that. And that can throw off the rest of your stitching. So always good. Leave a little gap so you know exactly where to snap it in. So those three pieces are done. I'm going to basically now right click, merge down, uh, and it says, do you want to uh, basically apply the layer mask? What that does is it um, uses the layer mask as an erasing tool now and merges them together. And I'm going to uh, merge down and I'm going to say apply. Once they've actually all merged together, you're going to see, sometimes when you zoom out, you see those little gaps like I'm seeing right here. This is actually because Photoshop cheats a bit when it displays super high res images from a distance. It cheats and actually has to drop out some pixels. So sometimes those little gaps can appear to be a flaw, but when you actually zoom in close or to full resolution, you don't see those gaps at all. And especially when we actually merge down, even if I zoom out to the full document size, they now look okay. They won't have that weird gap because um, Photoshop is just using a, a system to, to speed up the preview of massive or large images. Okay, so I'll come back with a completed image. Just one quick note, actually, before I finish this um, image compositing is if you look in the layer list, you have the name of all the quads. Now, if you jump back to Google Earth, you could go one by one and Again, just look at the grid that you kind of grabbed, uh, look at the labels, and then arrange them that way. Um, my preference is just to do it by eye. Uh, it doesn't take too much longer, I think, uh, or even maybe not much more time at all than doing it 
the way I just suggested. So I'll be back with a completed image. All right, I have um, <clears throat> one special topic to show you guys. Um, that is basically something called um, recorded actions and automation. So in Photoshop, any set of actions that you want to apply to a whole set of images, you can record them on one image and then apply them to a whole batch. Now I realize after uh, doing this project a few times, I could have done this and simplified a lot of my work and cut down a lot of time. So I'm going to just show you this first and then uh, you'll see the next part where I actually go through and assemble everything. Um, what I basically want to do is actually isolate these edges, these black edges, because I don't want them to show up. And I'm going to basically make this a layer mask. A couple of important things I've done is go to the magic wand tool, set the tolerance to zero, and turned off anti-aliasing. So that really ensures that I don't get any additional trim there. So uh, before I actually do that though, what I wanna do is go to uh, Window, Actions, and we have a set of pre-built actions. Well, I'm actually gonna create a new set of actions. Let's call them, uh, uh, let's call them Actions. Yes, <laughs> Actions. And I'm gonna create a new one, which is basically gonna be, um, Dem trim. So I just want to trim the uh, the excess off. And you see there's a record button. So what I'm doing now is actually recording each and every single step. So I'm going to be careful not to select any pixels because every selection I make is going to be recorded exactly to the pixel. So I really want to go right up against the edge, right up against the very edge where I know I've got tons of room. I'm going to see if this works okay. And then I'm going to hit uh, um, add mask and I'm going to invert the mask and that's that and I'm going to stop the recording now for this file because I have all the files open that I want this applied to I'm actually going to undo uh, those actions so I get back to the original state because what I'm going to do next is um, go to my actions I'm going to actually have this action play out this whole set across all the folders that are open so all those raw files that I opened up and to Photoshop will have this applied to them. So I'm going to go to File, Automate, Batch. So Maxions, Dem Trim, apply them to open files. Uh, I'm going to tell it to stop for errors and I'm just simply going to hit OK. So you see it open each, each open file, it jumps to that file, applies the action. You're going to want to double check these because uh, they might be screwed up, but this could save you a ton of time. Each one of these images has a slightly different resolution. So you can see there's a little bug in this one. Uh, that's basically in the mask. So if I zoom in really, really close, you can use Control plus, or if you hold down Alt actually and middle mouse scroll, you can zoom in. So you just have to make sure you click on your mask, uh, painting either black or white. Uh, let's see, I don't think I have an actual paintbrush active there. Oh, I guess I do. There we go, it's just a bit of lag. So I'm gonna just uh, paint this in use a very hard brush and we really want to avoid any little pixel bleed or anything there so I'm going to go back and forth by holding shift click and that should do it so just scroll through um, check your files make sure there's no unnecessary un undo um, masking but these should all be ready to go so you don't have to do this like by hand one by one by one um, they all look pretty good and now we can move on to the next part all right, we're back. So what I basically got is um, my completed compiled image. So uh, you can see I'm actually missing a few quads. Uh, if need be, I can, I left the last one here. Um, I've left it purposefully um, unconnected. So I could see the name of it, Mount Henry. I could go back and find that quad in the Google map plugin and maybe try and find the missing ones here. Um, but for brevity, what I'm gonna do is basically crop this image. Uh, I've already saved this as a PSD file, which is a good idea just while you're working to uh, keep this image. I'm going to crop right now this this displacement. And um, I'm going to just zoom in to all, the, all four corners to make sure I don't get any little uh, excess trim that I don't want. So I'll skim along here, go to the other far edge and travel up. And I can definitely squeeze a bit more pixel data out of here I think so get every pixel you can there we go 
what happened there. All right, let's zoom in a bit more. There. Okay, so I'll hit enter to apply that. I'm gonna keep the working PST because I might want to come back to that and expand that. So that's a good a good way to work is maybe leave one or two of the quad names left. Uh, keep your raw files, keep all that stuff in case you ever want to revisit it. And um, now I'm just gonna check out my image size. This should be fairly decent size and I want to check this out in pixels. So uh, this is 5507 by 8299. Um, what I'm probably going to do is make a plane inside of Max, or if I were to work in Maya, I would do the same thing. I would make a plane with a similar uh, scale or size. So I'll just type in 5507 and uh, 8299. And I'm going to save this as a TIFF. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. Uh, TIFF, actually, I'm going to flatten the image as well because I don't need any layers. So I just want to merge down or, or flatten image. And I'll do my File, Save As. Uh, go to TIFF and discard layers. So I'll just leave it as, as that. Save. Uh, there's no layers. Discard layers. And I'll save that. So I'm going to jump over to Max. Uh, I'm using a, a newer version of, of 3ds Max. So um, this should pretty much be the same in, in your version of Max as well. Okay, so Max is open. I'm going to create a plane. And I'm actually going to use the plane dimensions that I had here. So the 5507 and 8299. And that's just a simple way to maintain the proportionality of, um, of our image. So I'm going to go in, um, set this plane to a fairly high resolution, 50 by 50. And um, let's make sure that actually is applied 50 by 50. There we go. We'll go into the material editor. Actually, I don't need to go in the material editor. I'm going to go to uh, add a turbo smooth and I will then add a displacement. So the turbo smooth is there to basically allow me to control mesh density or resolution. Uh, usually I have two, one which is basically for in viewport reviewing. Uh, and then I have a second one which I can turn on only for render time. So I'll show you that in a minute. But I'm basically just going to go in, apply a displace modifier, turn on luminance center. Um, so uh, this will keep the middle of the plane roughly centered. I'm going to go to bitmap and find my um, find my files here. There we go, California. So now I can turn up the strength and I should start to see some magic happening any second. All right, there we go. We're starting to see the displacement. So one thing we need to check is to make sure that this thing isn't stretching or skewing. So I think my proportions are actually inverted. So I'm going to go down and cut the top number out, type in the bottom number. So basically I'm flipping the two numbers around. Um, I may need to um, do a fit so it fits properly. And now we can see the displacement at work. Uh, again, it comes out a bit low res. Uh, at this resolution. So you typically need one two million polys minimum to really begin to see the terrain as it as it is. So having this nice high res um, terrain is actually really, really useful. Okay, so I've, I've got a pretty decent system. You might be able to hear it like whirring up in the background. Um, so I now can have a really nice kind of camera view, see two ranges and a valley. Um, I get a really great um, sort of area in which I can create a, a nice shot. Um, again, I'm going to mention this, the secondary turbo smooth. So I can do this below displace as well. You want this typically below displace because you want to get the extra detail from below. So you can see the resolution has really jumped up and I'm getting even more detail. Um, 
So let me just show you with and without here. So that's with without the, the extra turbo smooth that I had. Uh, I don't want to work with that in viewport because it's actually quite slow. 5 million polys can, can lag. Um, it's actually working pretty nicely in this machine, but in the labs it'll probably be a bit slow. Um, so I, I also want to be able to move around this in real time no matter what. So I will basically turn the iterations to zero and turn render iterations to one. Um, and what's interesting is that when you add an extra turbo smooth like this, um, and it, you know having that extra iteration is really like setting this to iteration five. Um, so I could even potentially just use the one turbo smooth. Um, I just like to organize a little better so I can go iterations of five and I can always dynamically change this. So you could work that way or you can, you can have a second modifier. Um, what I'm going to cover next will be uh, rendering, lighting, and, and basically kind of creating a nice, quick, and beautiful shot using a simple daylight system, uh, maybe a background image, and uh, projection painting. So we'll cover that shortly.